we're going to talk about the Jaguar Vibrato. Well, Jaguar Jazzmaster Vibrato. It's got two pieces. It's got this bridge here, and it's got this tail piece over here. This tail piece and bridge are the same ones found on the Jaguar and Jazzmaster. As if I'm not making myself already more redundant. Anyway, the vibrato here is what we call floating vibrato, which is it is balanced off the spring tension and the string tension. The string tension pulls back on this bar, which pulls this lever down here down against this spring and this brass spring retainer right over here. The spring retainer tension adjustments done with this screw right here. This little this little sliding bit right here is called the Tremlock button. Um, this thing really on the Japanese guitars is a useless piece of crap. Uh, I've never been able to get it to stay in place. Uh, I've heard it's because there's a uh, certain um, lock washer that was used on the originals that's not present on the uh, Japanese copies of the uh, original units. So I just lock it in place like that and then it doesn't move. Now, looking at how your bar attaches, your bar push, just pushes straight into the unit. And this little doodad down here called a collet, which works similar to the collet that holds bits in your Dremel tool, for those of you that are into power tools like me. What it is is you have four little sections of metal that push in and they hold onto the bar down here. And then this bolt holds the collet in, the collet, the hole goes through here. As you can see, I have an add piece of plastic to give myself a little extra bar travel. And uh, as you can see, that's how it's attached. Remove it, you just pull it straight out like that. Um, it pivots on a knife edge pivot down here, held in by these three screws back here, and there are six screws that hold it to the top of the guitar. And there's the uh, label on it with the patent. There's a few subtle differences between these and the American-made vibratos from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and also uh, these and the American vintage reissues. I'm not going to go into them here. However, I'm going to give one suggestion, a couple, well, actually a couple suggestions. First thing is uh, if your bar feels kind of loose or doesn't want to stay in place, this collet either needs to be tightened with a pair of pliers very lightly because it might break off, or you need to replace the collet with a new one, which you can get from a place like Guitar Parts Resource or something like that. Another suggestion is on these Japanese ones, use a lighter duty spring than original. Actually, I found out the spring under heavy use tends to wear down and has a break in point that's a little bit lower than normal. Um, if you want to have heard, certain types of Bigsby Vibrato spring actually fit in place of this part here. So you could probably, yeah, I was even looking at some uh, possible uh, swap outs from Fred Meyer as well, because I noticed they had a bunch of springs that looked like this in their section. It looked like they might be a little bit tighter. Let's move on to some of the changes I've made to the bridge to uh, make it more stable. Here's the much maligned Fender Jaguar Jazzmaster Rocker Bridge. It sits in the guitar in two little cups. Um, when you use the bar, it rocks forward and backward with the movement. It's supposed to be free moving. Some people like to wrap electrical tape around these posts to make it more stable. Personally, I prefer it to work the way Leo Fender intended it to. Um, there are some changes I made. Um, to start off with, there are some problems that these bridges generally have. First problem uh, that most people notice right off the bat is as you can see, you have all these little grooves in the bridge saddles. These little grooves were uh, put in there for a reason. When Leo Fender designed the Jazzmaster in 56, 57, he intended for it to have adjustable string spacing for each string, so you could have the strings adjusted both, you know, forward and backward for intonation and side to side for string spacing, depending upon what you preferred. Um, it was also this primary design isn't very. Uh, prettier fancied out because it was designed to sit under a cover, which was a really dumb idea, especially when it comes to palm muting. Most people took the covers off these and lost them. 
Anyway, let's talk about the changes I've made to the bridge, right? Here's a low E saddle. Uh, I've put a shorter screw here, same reason I do, same thing I do to my Mustang vibrato, so I'm Japanese guitars as well. Uh, the Japanese models, I'll put these super ridiculously long screws on their a in action saddles. On the Jagstang, it's only really bad on the Jagstang Mustang, it's only really bad on the low E string, but my god, on the Jaguar, it's a hideous nightmare all the way across on that and the Jazzmaster, both. Uh, my way of getting around that is usually to adjust the saddles fairly low, but on this string it will always be a problem because you have the low E being where it intonates at, it has to sit pretty far back, so I stuck a shorter screw in there. Another problem that, especially with the Japanese guitars or a guitar that's not worn in, is that the saddles have a tendency to move back and forth. This is because the springs they use in the Japanese guitars are only about that long. I swapped them out with a much longer spring, which as you can see that one's fully compressed. I mean, I can't make this thing wobble very well at all. So it's rock solid. I mean, I can hammer on this thing Metallica style all night. It's not going anywhere. The, uh... And then another change I did is these, uh bridge saddle screws are all the wrong size. I went up to a standard thread instead of a metric thread on these, gummy up the threads and they wouldn't fall down. Same idea behind the 3M tape that I wrapped around these and won't go down as I'm playing guitar. And of course, uh, this thing's aimed with the intonation screws towards the back, but I'll talk about that later. Okay, let's put this bugger back on my Jag, let's put all this shit back on my Jaguar and get her back up and going. I might show you some more of the trouble spots on the Jag and Jazzmaster, and even some pertaining just to the Jag.